Greetings my lovelies and thank you for stopping by the circle today. This week I have a book review for you so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into The Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahuan. And I probably messed up the last name but I am so terribly sorry. So this is a book that I've seen kind of all over the place. I've heard that a lot of people liked it, I heard some people kind of didn't. So I was kind of like on the fence about it one way or the other, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. But before I tell you how to think about it, let's just go ahead and talk about the basic structure of this world. So in this world, the church kind of rules everything and witches are in pseudo hiding. Only females are witches, which is kind of typical to the point, but meh, whatever. The interesting factor of this is, is that magic is done not just by casting spells, but by seeing threads and the connections and the give and take of the universe, much like how the magic system works in Full Metal Alchemist, where there is equivalent exchange to get a life you must give up a life. Sometimes it can be symbolic, the thing that you're giving up, or sometimes it can be quite literal. But the other cool feature is, is that when they do this magic, it creates a, like an actual scent that the witch hunters can use to track them like bloodhounds. It's kind of funny, but kind of cool at the same time. So like many other books where you have the church suppressing the witches, there is this just generalized clash where you have like extremes on both ends just kind of keeping the whole fucking system like <laughs> type of things i don't know what that was i don't really know what i'm trying to say but witches are trying to gain back their powers church is trying to keep them from doing it it just creates a swirling vortex of shit that is going to eventually hit the fan so let's go ahead and talk about the characters in this book that are going to have to shovel the shit so our main two characters are Lou, who is a witch, and Reed, who is a rich hunter. Now, Lou ends up married to Reed by a series of unfortunate events, and she kind of enjoys torturing him, and I kind of feel bad because he generally, while he is a witch hunter, he is a nice guy, and he wants to do right, and she just pushes all his buttons, but he also has a giant stick up his ass. His best friend, John Luke, is also a bit of a bastard, and they're kind of having a bit of a conflict, because Reed got placed into a position of power above Jean-Luc. And there's also this little like boot kid named Ansel who's kind of cool and very laid back and he doesn't really do much, but he's prevalent enough that I felt like I should mention him here. Now Lou's best friend is Coco, who is a blood witch, which is exactly what it sounds like, but instead of using threads, she uses her own blood, and so she's kind of covered in scars, and they're kind of separate from the other witches, and I'm kind of wondering, I can't quite remember, if it almost seems like if they're racially split, like all the white witches use threads, and then all the the POC witches use blood, because it's kind of all that we've seen at the moment. I don't know, I haven't read the second book, so I don't really know too much about the wider diversity in this world, but that's kind of how it's set up. Then we have the Archbishop, Bishop, who is the extreme on the church side, and Dom Blanc, who is the extreme on the witch's side. And those two have a very interesting history and backstory together, which I will not get into because I do try to leave these things spoiler free. You are very welcome. So let's go ahead and talk about my overall thoughts for this book. Now, as I was doing my research for this book, I kept seeing enemies to lovers, enemies to lovers. Oh my god, I love this book. It's an enemies to lovers. Now, do I think it's an enemies to lovers story? If my tone really suggests it, no, I don't. It's just more of like a mild annoyance to love lovers. Because the entire time, Reed doesn't know that Lou is a witch. And mild spoiler, he doesn't find out until like the very near fucking end of the book. So to me, if someone is going to be an enemy to lovers, there needs to be a greater sense of them dying or a greater conflict than really what we were given in this book. Now, the, the stakes don't always have to be life and death. You know, it can just be great annoyance with just constant bashing of heads, like in Pride and Prejudice. But that typically also is where both parties understand where the person stands. You know, 
In the example of Pride and Prejudice, Mr. Darcy is very wealthy and he knows that Elizabeth is very poor. She also knows that he is very condescending and they clash over this differences in class and upbringing, but they're both very much aware of that nature ahead of time and quickly or, or quickly are aware of it as they knew each other. And then they learn to overcome that by seeing beyond those. Like I said, Reed didn't know that Lou was a witch. He just thought that she was a fucking pain in his ass that basically twisted everything around and he was tied to her to be his wife forever. He didn't know she was a witch. It wasn't like the Archbishop said, oh, you're, we're trying to make peace between the witch clans and the church, so you, my whatever he is, are going to marry this witch here, who is of higher equal standing, and we, you guys will be the bridge of the mix, you know, between the two worlds. Yeah, none of that shit happened. So I'm just like, not really enemies lovers. And I'm ranting, so I'm going to move on to my next point. The world was okay. I thought it was just a basic, interesting premise. But nothing really too like, oh my god, this is amazing and I can't believe it. But interesting enough that I do want to know what happens next, so I will be reading the next book. However, I don't know if I will be purchasing the next book or if I will just be getting it from my local library. Either way, it still supports the author, but I also don't spend my money, so who knows? And like always, if I don't generally enjoy a book, please don't take that as a reason to not read it for yourself and formulate like your own opinions. These are just my thoughts, and sometimes my mood and my life can really affect how much I enjoy a book. Case in point, the first book of Percy Jackson and Hunger Games. I absolutely hated those books and put them down and almost never read the rest of the series just because I just did not like the books. And I didn't pick up Hunger the Games again until the movies came out. I was like, okay, this seems kind of cool. And I was able to read it again with kind of like a refreshed mind. Same thing with Percy Jackson. So please don't take it because I could have just been in a flunk. It's still pretty cool and interesting. There was some things that were kind of, I feel like, thrown in there at the end. But I have a feeling that they were just kind of setting up the second book. So, like I said, I'm interested enough to see where it goes next. So, that is all that I have for you today. If you have a book that you think I might like, please drop it down below. I'll add it to my To Read Mountain. And if you've read this book and completely disagree with everything that I said, I'm open for debate politely and kindly down in the comments below. With all that being said, I will catch you guys later. Have a good one.